Hello and welcome back to the top eight of the Pokemon 2022 Bilbao special event. My name is Jamie Boyt. I am once again featured by Costa Dynamos and we are going to be featuring another fantastic top eight game for you. We really will indeed and what a battle it will be. We've got two uh, Spanish representatives right now going toe to toe. It will be the battle between Juan One and Juan Two, I believe. Yes, we have <laughs> one versus one in this top eight. So uh, we can have a quick look at the bracket to see how our top eight is shaping up so far. We did see Antonio advance over Frank uh, in that game that we did just feature. We can see that Oriole will also be advancing into the top four, so we'll be featuring them very shortly on. So congratulations to them. Uh, but we are going to be featuring Juan versus Juan for this match. So uh, the 8-0 was uh, Juan Odriozola, uh, who managed to get 8-0 with a Nunala Groudon. Lunala Groudon, something that we were a bit aware of Lunala starting to be picked up on with usage stats, right? But um, actually making a proper break right here, it, it, it pays dividends of Eveltel not being as commonly present, which is kind of contrary to what you'd expect. I think um, uh, Joe Udate in the European International Championships actually did exceptionally well with carrying that Eveltel straight up to top four. So actually a bit of absence of it here has gone a long way, at least for this Lunala, because it is essentially the kind of set that carries the media being power herb sort of a combination, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the, one of the main things that has over the Calyrex Shadow Rider that mm. shares the same typing, is a lot faster. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the power herb meter beam gives it that big hit into something like an Incineroar. The yes. Calyrex, it has Mudshot as its option. And that, that's... <laughs> Pretty weak, so uh, yeah, Lunar has a, a big thing over that, and it also gets to be slow enough to make use of its own trick room as well. So exactly, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised to see it uh, do so well and go Ato as well. Uh, oh, but no. as well, we have uh, Juan as well uh, on the other side that uh, was rocking the Zashin and Kyoga, managing to squeak in in that six-two record. So mm -hmm. uh, you will be instead of voting for Juan v Juan, we've got their surnames <laughs> here. So please vote for Juan Benitez if you are supporting uh, Juan on the left-hand side, and then Juan Odriozola if you are supporting them on the right-hand side. I know, and it is going to be such a hyped up match. I know that the Spanish community are going a bit crazy about this one too. They're really wanting to see the best of these trainers going into this battle. Of course, they give much love to both of these trainers equally. So it'll be really fascinating to actually see how the Lunala actually pairs up within this matchup as well, because um, there, it is also escorted by that Groudon, and we've previously seen, uh, for example, in day one, where you had that sort of combination going, the Groudon would actually go ahead and try to utilize Dynamax, go for the Max Quakes, um, boosting up special defense both for itself as well as the Lunala, but... Uh, the trainers tend to try to play Lunala to the point where they really need to have the appropriate board state in order to allow it some breathing space and to actually put in the work that it needs to. Because obviously it being the ghost typing, it's immune to fake out. So like you said, Jeremy, there's the trick room option. There's the media beam just like boosting up both the um, any sort of special attack that's coming out from it. So for example, the Moongeist beam, which actually in this situation has that signature secondary effect of ignoring any sort of abilities that it strikes into right yeah, so it, it does get a bit more niche over uh, the calyrex as well yes uh, if you face something like a mimikyu you, you're probably moving first with your exactly. calyrex the astral barrage is being whiffed into the mimikyu and then yep. something else has to attack it but lunala doesn't even care about that so it's always nice yep. getting those uh, ex extra bits on top that mm -hmm. make a pokemon stand out as much and lunala definitely has its own niche there made out for it the main thing is that power herb meteor beam yes. set it's probably the main pokemon that can be so that we've seen it in previous formats with something like nialigo but that with all the, the threats to nialigo running around that's probably not the pokemon you want to be seeing uh, at the moment. So Definitely. the Lunala Power Herb Meteor Beam is mm -hmm. the main combination for that Pokemon. And so I'm not surprised to see it do so well here. Oh, exactly that. And of course, we could just go ahead and check out the achievements as well from both the trainers on the screen. At the moment, we do have Juan Audrey Zola and um, uh, the VR Challenge Top 16 of 2022, as well as the Rose Tower Finals Top 8. And actually, we're just being told that the trainers are going straight into battle. So we're going to go ahead and get things underway and see what leads are going to be presented from us. We're going to be seeing Juan uh, Odrizola from their side actually bring in the Lunala and the Incineroar, whilst over on Juan Benitez's side, we've got the Kyoga and the female Indeedy for that cheeky little psych terrain to nullify the fake out, as well as have that redirection available to itself. So definitely no Moon Dice Beams coming out here. Jay. Yeah, the Indeedy is going to be effectively the perfect Pokemon against that Incineroar and Lunala lead, especially with that Psychic Seed boosting up its special defense mm. even further. So even the Meteor Beam won't be doing too much damage to it at this point. Yep. Sets the Psychic terrain, so Incineroar can't go for a fake out. So 
This is a pretty uncontested opportunity to go for a water spout with the Kyogre. You would assume yep. that Kyogre would be outspeeding the Lunala. Usually when the Lunala you run, it's much more bulky and, mm -hmm. and slow, so you can make use of a Trick Room that is most commonly set on the Lunalas as well. Uh, but of course, you do have the option to switch into your Groudon uh, to be able to take that. But that's not Ooh. a Groudon, that's switching in, that's an Amoongus, but that's still going to take the water spout pretty well. It definitely will, and I think in this situation, you kind of have to. There's no Follow Me coming out or Helping Hand from that female and Deity. Water Spout dealing very respectable amounts of damage there, of course, breaking that Shadow Shield, uh, paying dividends as to why it's such a really good ability. And the Mystical Fire comes out here, Jamie, goes straight into the Amoongus, will be dropping a special attack, and more importantly, get a bit of chip damage dealt onto it, whilst the Lunala uncontestedly is just going to go ahead and set up Trick Room. Yeah, I quite like that Mystical Fire as well, because that, al that also covers the Groudon switch in, because if the Groudon switch is in to try and overwrite the rain, yes. you're getting a sun-boosted Mystical Fire into the Groudon, and that extra chip Very may nice. put it over, over the edge to be able to allow that Water Spout and Mystical Fire combination to KO the ground. So quite a nice play there. Uh, we know that the Psychic Seed is on the Indeed. There's nothing like a safety goggle. So yep. the Amoongus is pretty free at this point to go for any of the spores that it would want to do. You'd have to switch into either your Whimsicott or your Venusaur, like we are seeing with uh, Benita switching in here. Uh, yep. The Venusaur would be a very nice way of eating up that spore. As we are seeing Lunala switch out as well. And there's the Groudon. Ooh. Now we're going to override the rain. So let's see which target the Amoongus is going to try to go ahead and put to sleep with its pesky little spore move. And um, of course, this is quite interesting because the Venusaur naturally will actually just be underspeeding everything in Trick Room at this point. As we actually do see the Spore targeting the Kyogre there. So very well played, a defensive sort of strategy that Juan went in there. He knew that um, regardless, there, none of his Pokemon are actually going to be put to sleep with a scenario as Venusaur is immune to Powder Moves due yeah. to its Grass type. Yeah, I, I would say that Audrey well is in a pretty strong position now because you've gone for the Protect the Kyogre. You probably don't have the Whimsicott waiting in the back. You've got to assume that there's something like the, the Charizard of the Zashian waiting yep. in the back. Uh, so there's no real switch-ins anymore for that spore. Something's going to have to eat up uh, this spawn. It's going to be the Indeedee at least. So, uh, the, But then the Venusaur is facing down the sun-boosted Groudon now. So it's going to be taking a lot of damage. That might be why it needs to go for this Dynamax. It yep. should be able to survive the attacks, especially if it's Heat Crash as the uh, fire movement choice potentially mm. on the Groudon. Then that would make it completely immune because, of course, Heat Crash doesn't affect Dynamax Pokemon in the yes. slightest. So it's still a pretty reasonable position for the Venusaur. It should be able to shrug off whatever the ground will want to go for and then you get to ignore the Amoongus as well the rage, with the Rage Powder so yep. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Vine Lash come out into this ground for some massive damage. Yeah this could be a real risky uh, play right here as we are going to be seeing the Spore going straight into that female Indeedee which will be guaranteeing that turn of sleep the subsequent turn and yes, yes Jamie you called it so well Heat Crash tried to target the Venusaur there but due to the G-Max scene is unaffected and the G-Max Vine Lash comes out straight into the ground and oh my lord how much much damage has been dealt both directly and subsequently with that residual damage thanks to the secondary effect of it. Yeah, very strong Dynamax. Uh, you don't often see it uh, Dynamax to make yourself immune to a move, but that yeah. was the, the perfect opportunity there, making yourself immune to the Heat Crash. Of course, those weight-based moves, we've got Heat Crash, we've got Heavy yes. Slam, the Grass Knots do not affect Dynamax nope. Pokemon, so uh, they are clearly way, way too heavy for those move interactions. <laughs> so now the Venusaur, absolutely massive, going to be able to shrug off that Heat Crash like it is nothing, and the only opportunity mm. to be able to hit it with a Fire-type move would be to Dynamax and turn the Heat Crash mm. into a Max Flare. Uh, so even though there is not many much HP remaining on both these Pokemon, especially the ground as well, it took so much from the yeah. Vine Lash, it has to go for this Dynamax to be able to hit the Venusaur. This feels like a turn a bit too late, from my opinion, um, just because I would have really liked this a Dynamax play coming out and at least guaranteeing that the Groudon will stay healthy going into this turn, but uh, that is what's happened right now. But no, we actually see the reveal of a Pollen Puff there. It's not going to be regaining as much HP due to that Dynamax um, uh, form on the Groudon, but it's still going to be recovering nevertheless. It may allow it, after this Max Quake, of course, to survive a G-Max Vine Lash going into that slot. It, the Max Quake dealing so much damage onto that female and Diddy, which of course is still asleep. We'll have an opportunity to try to wake up the following turn as that G-Max Vine Lash does come out. It actually targets the Amoongus there and completely ignores the Groudon, Jamie. Yeah, interesting choice going for, for the Vine Lash. Maybe trying to catch something like a Nunala switching in. Oh. Uh, maybe thinking that the Amoongus may be almost useless in that turn because Spore can't happen into the Adidas it's already sleep. Spore can't happen into the Venusaur, it's a Grass-type. Yeah. But then the Pollen Puff is the option uh, of choice into the Groudon. 
That Max Quake should have allowed it to survive the Vine Lash as well. So actually a very smart Dynamax choice from the Groudon. It made it through the turn completely un unscathed. That allows another opportunity for that Pollen Puff. The Groudon's probably going to be above half health at the end of this turn. So uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's a really, really smart Dynamax, even at such low HP, going for that option. Yeah. Uh, and going for the Quakes as well. So you need to go from the Max Fire if you want a super effective hit into the uh -huh. Venusaur. But Max Quake would have allowed it to survive that attack. So uh, really, really smart use of the Dynamax coming out for Audrey Zola here. So I really do like that. And now you, you're putting yourself into a much more favorable position uh, with the Groudon. Mm -hmm. uh, you are running out of Trick Room turns at least, and the Indeedee has woken up, Ooh. so that means that you will not be targeting down this Venusaur with your max move as well. Yeah, exactly, as we're expecting the max weight to once again come out, but not before actually the Pollen Buff goes first. So we actually see that nice little interaction there that uh, multiple things happened in that situation. Um, the Groudon wasn't able to actually get any potential recovery dealt onto it, but now is allowed to go straight into the Venusaur and deal direct damage. Thank to um, the previous turn's Max Quake, putting it within the appropriate HP range for that Pollen Puff to pick up the KO. So right now we are looking at a Groudon and an Amundius at plus two of their special defense, which means this G-Max Vine Lash definitely does not come close to picking up the KO, neither does the ferocious beating at the yeah, end. Yeah, you're getting all the Max Quake boosts and it's just stacking and stacking and you're able to shrug off all those moves. Yep. So, and yeah, getting the Max move into the Venusaur, I'm just going to eat my words there. <laughs> the Pollen Puff going on the offensive, of course, it can heal your uh, side, if you go for the side Pollen Puff, it heals yourself, but it does do damage as well and it was super effective damage in DD enough to pick up, pick up the KO. Yep. So, uh, at least now the Zashin comes in, so it can threaten down some massive damage uh, into the Among Us or the Groudon as well. Uh, Venusaur is still in a pretty reasonable position, it's still somewhat uncontested, even though it's lost its Dynamax here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and the Max Flare coming out of the Heat Crash could still do a lot of damage to the Venusaur, uh, probably pick up the KO as well. And as the Groudon, it's been taking a lot of damage from the Vine Ashes, mm -hmm. but because of all those special defense boosts, it's just able to make it through all of these turns. So very impressive uh, use of the Dynamax from the Groudon. Yeah, it really is. And now that Trick Room has expired, uh, we're just going to actually see the Zashin being able to come for that direct momentum swing. If it can, of course, we do have to take into consideration that Incineroar, which I have a bit of a feeling we may be seeing switching in right here. Well, whenever you have a Zashin on the field, the, o the o obvious choice is always switching your Incineroar. You yeah. always want to be reducing the damage output of the opposing Zashin, and you've always got a Behemoth Blade switch in with that Incineroar as well. Yeah, exactly that, and we are going to be seeing the Incineroar now on the field, of course, dropping that attack from the plus one stage to neutral, whilst the Amundus actually opts to go for the Protect there. Makes a lot of sense, just wants to make sure that we can, uh, that uh, Juan uh, Odrio Fola can actually maintain their board state. We see the Leaf Storm going into what was that Groudon, now the Incineroar, not being able to deal as much damage as it would have liked, even though it still shows a bit of power there. Whilst the Zashian did try targeting down the Amundus, try to get rid of it, but in this situation, I believe... Uh, uh, Juan Odriozola is actually just trying to better their situation and kind of um, allow longevity with the crowd on the back because Juan Benitez does still have that Kyogre that they're saving in the back. Yeah, they do, and so you really need to be getting into Trick Room uh, with that Kyogre because it does outspeed pretty much the entirety of uh, Odriozola's team, so oh, it, it gets into position to water spout, that could be a bit awkward. That's my, maybe why the Lunala has switched in for that move, get that Regenerator, yep. get the Lunala back on the field. But Zashin's going to keep itself safe from that Fake Out, but Sleep Powder does land into the Incineroar, so mm. uh, that is going to uh, prevent any of those passing shots, try and reposition yourself as you try and set Trick Room. Yep. It also means that now Lunala is pretty much open to a potential Sleep Powder from the Venusaur as well. You could switch out into the Amoongus to try and eat that up, but even if the Amoongus gets on the field next to the Lunala, you can't Rage Powder away the Sleep Powder. You have to, if you want to get into Trick Room, you have to try and accept that you have to eat a Sleep Powder or try and dodge a Sleep Powder yes. to try and get into the Trick Room now. Yeah, exactly that, and Lunala does have its Shadow Shield broken, but before that, we're actually going to be seeing the Tyoga switch in over on Juan Benitez's side will be bringing that rain, so um, we're seeing a bit of a parallel uh, from day one where both a, a Venusaur or a Charizard actually being supported by a Kyogre in contrary to his Sun, but always being brought with that Sun matchup because they're so, so powerful going into them. As we're actually just going to be seeing the Lunala go for the very safe Sleep Powder, it will be avoiding being put to sleep by that Venusaur and the Immune just switches in. So uh, we see that Juan may have gotten the jump, uh, or Juan Benitez actually got the jump on Juan Odriozola. Um, in anticipation of maybe a redirection Pokemon being brought in like that Amundus. Getting the Amoongus in doesn't help with the with the Rage Powder at all, with the Sleep Powder, but it's probably going to survive whatever the attack the Kyogre would want to go for, so oh. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see a trade of Sleeps at this point. Yeah. Uh, you can go for the Sleep Powder pretty safely into the Nunala without the fear of the Rage Powder, 
but then the Amoongus would just be able to go for the Spore into the Kyogre. You should be able to survive a Water Spout, uh, or even an Ice Beam at this point with the, with the Amoongus, with all that Regenerator uh -huh. uh, getting it back pretty healthy. Uh, do you maybe switch in your Incineroar to try and eat up the Sleep Powder that sh sh most likely is going to be targeting into the Lunala, yep. and then just sacrifice it to the uh, Water Spout, or do you switch out the Amoongus here to get uh -huh. some even more Regenerator Ooh. over at the Sun with the Groudon that's switching in as well? That would have made sense, but we're actually going to be seeing the Groudon brought in for that Amoongus. The Amoongus will be able to go ahead and uh, regenerate its HP further due to its regeneratability. And we actually see the Weather Ball coming out from the Venusaur, goes straight into that Lunala slot. Doesn't deal that much damage at all. And we've got a full powered Water Spout, but in the sun, enough to pick up the KO on the Groudon. But thanks to that weather change, the Lunala will prevail and will go ahead and set up that Trick Room and allow the Amoongus to be brought straight in right now. Yeah, Audrey Zola definitely needs to be in the Trick Room to uh, get themselves back into this game, and they have managed to do so. And that was a missed opportunity to go for a Sleep Powder, oh. but maybe that miss was what the concern was there. Uh, the Water Spout, if it wasn't in the sun, in combination with the Weather Ball, it would have still been a Water Type Weather Ball, but yeah. that would have still been enough. It would have done the same amount of damage uh, to the Lunala, so that would have been enough to pick out the Lunala. And then you've stopped the potential of Trick Room. You can Water Spout for the rest of the game at this point. Yeah. But now you're in the awkward position where you have to try and switch around uh, the spores are going to be uh, fired off into the Kyogre, into the Zashian that's just switched in now. And the Nala pretty much has free reign to go for what it wants. It still hasn't used its Meteor Beam yet, so it can get its charge turn and start doing some massive damage in this trick room. But we need to be aware that its HP is quite low right now, so there could be a potential of a Pollen Puff a play coming out. If there's an, any expectation of a Protect, which no, it does not. Spore goes into that Kyogre's Protect right there, and the Meteor Beam, like you mentioned, Jamie, is going to be unleashed here from the Lunala's side. We'll be boosting its special attack straight up to plus one there thanks to that power herb item so the, the target to be um expecting right here would that would be that venus or slot naturally it will still deal respectable chip damage onto zashian uh, not only a bit of a bulky pokemon but that steel typing as well allowing it to not take it very effectively but in this situation once again i guess juan benitez just needs to try to get the prediction of where the spore goes into if they want to try to switch in that venus or to render it nullified yeah if you can catch the switch in with the Venusaur on that Spore, then you may be able to uh, reposition yourself out of this Trick Room. Yep. But if you do switch in the Venusaur and the other slot gets Spored, uh, that's going to be pretty detrimental at that mm. point because it's going to allow the, the Lunala to pretty much just launch off its plus one me uh, Moongeist Beams at this point. Sashi might be in range uh, with that extra chip from the Meteor Beam. It might be in range of that attack, but not actually going to be protecting itself here and it's going to be using up some of its turns of Trick Room. Yeah, it just wants to slow things down right there. It doesn't feel comfortable knowing that both Pokemon to try to target it there. As the Spore goes into the Kyogre, the Kyogre will now be put to sleep. Takes its mandatory turn of sleep there, which allows the potential to wake up the following turn. But Behemoth Blade, ooh, goes straight into that Lunala's Protect there. So Juan Odriozola is able to just go ahead and try to gain a bit of momentum there and start targeting perhaps that Kyogre slot whilst trying to put the other one to sleep unless there's any sort of heavy read play going on here. Yeah, you've got a pretty safe spore at this point into the session. If it switches out into Venusaur, you're still Moongeist beaming what oh. you would assume to be the Kyogre. You could opt for the Moongeist beam into the Zashian, but that's still a wait, so it does have the opportunity to go for a protect. It did not, so it's yep. going to be just going to sleep to this spore. Uh, so we'll have to see where the Moongeist beam is targeting. If it does go into the Zashian, reading that it didn't go for protect, that could potentially be a knockout with that increased edge special mm. attack. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see it be strong enough to be able to knock out this Kyogre in two shots. As the Moongeist beam is being launched off, it is into that Kyogre slot, and yeah, it is able to knock it out in two shots, so we'll have to see what the turns of sleep are going to uh, do for this game. Yeah, exactly that, and we do have to take into consideration that Trick Room will soon be ending. We've only got one final turn, so Juan Odriozola has to try to position themselves to perhaps even get another Trick Room set up, because at the moment, they will be losing the speed battle um, once the Trick Room does expire. Yeah, they will, so uh, we'll have to see if the Kyogre is able to wake up. Zashin could wake up on this turn as well because it didn't go for that Protect, just uh -huh. ate up the Spore. It has to use up its first turn of sleep, so both Pokemon do have the opportunity to wake up. Uh, if they do manage to wake up and go for Protect, they are out of the Trick Room, so um, wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, Benita go for that play. Uh, we'll see if um, they manage to wake up. And if they don't, Moongeist Beam should be able to KO either of these Pokemon. Uh, it'll be pretty close on the Zashin, but it is confirmed pretty much at this point it would KO the Kyogre which does yep. indeed wake up so it is able to make it out of that trick room. There we go it will not be 
put to sleep or attacked into, at least for this turn. We see Zashian take its mandatory turn of sleep there. Pollen Puff, however, does come out right now and will be able to just go ahead and uh, reheal a bit of Ludnala's hit points as the Moon Dice Beam was hoping to be able to go ahead and target down, pick up a KO on that Kyogre, but naturally was unsuccessful and only met with that Protect as Trick Room is now expired, Jamie. So Juan Odriozola really needs to think about their position here and maybe hope for Zashian to still be sl uh, sleeping, essentially. Yeah, if they go for Rage Powder this turn, they pretty much will guarantee that they get Trick Room up because in the, like without the rain, the Origin Pulse should not be strong enough to, to KO this Lunala. Yeah. So not opting to try and put the Kyogre to sleep in it this turn, you Ooh. can do that on the next turn, especially because that Zashian woke up. If that Zashian targeted down the Lunala and the Kyogre got the Origin Pulse as well, that would probably have picked up the KO. So the Rage Powder makes that very safe. There's a lot of damage you take on the Amoongus, and now the Kyogre gets to follow up with that Origin Pulse that does connect with both. Uh, so it's going to be very close if it's going to KO. There's no rain up, so Amoongus is still going to be resisting it, but Ooh. it does drop. But Lunala does survive, and it should be setting up a third Trick Room in this game. <laughs> Not what you commonly see. You'd think this is a singles battle, but no, uh, ladies and gents, don't worry. Rest assured, this is VGC. This is doubles right now. So we're going to be seeing the Incineral uh, being brought in right here. It is still asleep, Jamie, so we do have to take that into consideration as well. It does get its Intimidate off onto the Zashian, but unless it somehow can wake up, I'm unsure on the current sleep uh, turn that uh, it's currently going through and all that. It might not even be able to get a fake out. So this is looking a bit tough and we do also have time of the battle, the remaining time to take into consideration. Yeah, it has been going on for quite a while at this point. So yep. it's three, three, get three Pokemon against two at this point. Yes. Uh, but it's, all the Pokemon are starting to get in range of just one attack. Uh, the Kyogre is in range of the Moongeist Beam. We're yet to see if the Zashin is in range of the Moongeist Beam. Uh, but Lunala can only pick up one KO. If it is still able to KO the Zashin, that is, you can only pick up one KO this turn, and the other Pokemon would be able to pick up the KO on the Lunala. If the Kyogre is uh, not targeted, then it gets the Origin Pulse and most likely picks up the KO on the Incineroar and be very close to the Lunala as well. Oh. The Lunala still should be in range of the Behemoth Blade. The Incineroar does stay asleep, so it doesn't get to go for any of the Flare Blitz since the Zashin, the Fake Outs put a stop to the moves. And Lunala is just going to go for a Moongeist Beam into the Zashin. We'll have to see if it's enough to pick up the KO, and Ooh. it is not. It is not surviving on nine hit points whilst the Kyogre is able to successfully land with both of its hits of the Origin Pulse right there. And that is going to be game one going to Juan Benitez, aka Juan One. Amazing. <laughs> yes, and it, it, it doesn't end up mattering that the Zashin was able to survive that attack. The Origin Pulse was enough, but that is good information to know yes. that Meteor Beam in 2 plus 1 Moon Guys Beam was not enough to pick up the K on the Zashin, so that is going yep. to be good information uh, going into that second game, but uh, yeah, that was a, a, a long game, Yes. and <laughs> even though three Trick Rooms were set up, it was the non-Trick Room player that was able to come out on top, so able Amazing. to survive through not one, not two, but three <laughs> Trick Rooms. I, I think you should be <laughs> awarded a medal for that to be honest because that is quite uh, dominating with regards to the speed tiering at that so I think uh, Juan Benitez actually really playing well to their outs uh, being able to utilize that Venusaur as well to kind of uh, negate any sort of spores going into your slots is really good because you put a lot of pressure onto your opponent uh, forcing them to make the reads okay which target are you going to try to focus on to um, and kind of get into those intricate little mind games and all that and uh, that, that can really throw the sway of a match and um, how we've seen Juan Benitez kind of go ahead and handle it has been exceptional. And I think that is something that uh, Juan Odriozola really has to take into consideration going into uh, this game too. Yes, Trick Room is good. It is great. You have the speed advantage, but there's always the situation where you may run out of uh, resources. They might end up uh, becoming limited per se. And that's essentially what we saw and how Benitez was able to go ahead and run away with that game one. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Trick Room is the main uh, strategy for these kind of teams with the Lunar and the Ground and being so low. Yep. Uh, maybe you should go for the faster move with the Charizard, then you don't opt for that Trick Room. Mm. Uh, but because you are going for that and it wasn't successful, yep. even though you got into Trick Room so many times, the environment that you want to be in against these kind of teams uh, was just not quite enough. There was. I think one Sleep Powder that was hit on the Venusaur, so it was just yep. stalling out the Incineral, but that seemed to be enough. There was the opportunity to go for it in Lunala, but mm -hmm. it seemed like uh, you were able to weather that storm, even though it was still awake and able to get the second Trick Room as yes. well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit awkward when your main strategy didn't actually 
quite get there. And so now you have to adjust mm -hmm. uh, going into this second game. I guess it's a bit hindered as well because um, Juan Benita does have the Charizard and Venusaur that they could actually bring to uh, go against the Sun mode of Juan Odriozola. So it's quite awkward in that scenario with the matchups. But of course, we're going to be going straight into game two. We have the leads on the field. Juan Odriozola is going to be leading with that Lunala and the Incineroar. Whilst over on Juan Benita's side, we've got that Kyoga and Venusaur lead. Yeah, so he's still got the potential of switching in the Groudon, but mm -hmm. if you do this time, that just speeds up the Venusaur and then that will be able to uh, go for whatever it wants on this first turn. Yeah. Uh, you could be going for a fake out with the Incineroar. That would put a stop to the Sleep Powder, mm -hmm. but maybe there's the Indeedee waiting in the back this time, and uh, we'll have to see if that is going to be the option of choice. There's no fake out coming out at least. It's just going to be the Amoonga switching in. Uh, but it didn't oh, seem oh, oh. like Benitez was switching out at all into the Indeedee. Just going immediately on the fence. It does not care about fake out at all. Wow. Going ahead and breaking that Shadow Shield once more, mirroring that game one. But guess what? We've got something else uh, cooking up, and that is the Sleep Powder going directly into that Lunala, putting it to sleep and stopping it and preventing it generally from going for either a Trick Room or any sort of um, attack there. But I would expect, due to the speed turn there, that it was trying to opt for the Trick Room. Yeah, that was a just a fantastic turn for Benitez there coming yeah. out. Shadow Shield broken, you are still in the rain. Uh, the Amoongus does still need to be dealt with, but it's taken a lot of damage from that Water Spout. Uh, it would be interesting to see if a Water Spout in combination with a Venusaur attack would be enough to KO the Amoongus. Mm. Uh, its best option would probably be a Rain Boosted Weather Ball or maybe the Earth Power as well. I'll be very close if that's enough to KO the Amoongus, but if it is, then you just get to very freely go launch off both those attacks. Yes. Uh, because the Lunala is asleep at this point, Shadow Shield broken means it is definitely in range of that Water Spout. If you switch in the Groudon to be able to allow the Lunala to survive, then you're just going to be taking a full power water spout with your ground on as well as potentially something from the Venusaur as well. So uh, that was a fantastic start coming out for Benitez here. And if you wanted to get that extra bit of damage onto that Amoongus, uh, you don't need to go for an Earth Power or Weather Ball. You can go for a Max Quake or a, a Max Geyser instead. Yeah, exactly. That. And I think um, the other play was the fact that Juan Benitez was able to punish a uh, relatively what Juan Odriozola expected to be uh, perhaps safe sort of setup because they wanted to try to get the trick room and say, you know what, I'm going to put immediate pressure by going for the Amuga Spores uh, following subsequently after. But no, we see the G-Max Venusaur coming out to protect from that Amoongus. It wants to preserve its HP, especially against that Water Spout there. So the Kyogre didn't opt to go for the Dynamax, but oh my <laughs> lord, it's you see why that Shadow Shield is so, so crucial to have. That was a raw KO right there, as it wasn't able to safeguard itself from halving the damage output into it. And of course, we see the G-Max Vine Lash going into a times four resisting Pokemon, but you know what? The important thing is that residual damage due to that ferocious beating. Yeah, you always want to be setting that up at some point. Didn't get any damage this turn because the Amoongus was that grass type as well. Yep. Uh, but now it is just set on the field. You can do whatever you want. Uh, and you don't need to go for Vine Lash this turn. You could go for now uh, the Max Flare based off the Weather Ball because the Sun has been set up. That should be able to pick up the AK on the Amoongus. Yep. And then that would allow your Kyogre to, even in the Sun, have a single target Water Spout. So uh, now you've taken care of the Nunala. Trick Room is not an option in the slightest. So you're going to be moving first with all of your Pokemon for Benita's side of the field. And the Moongus needs to get out of there to, to get its regenerator going. If the Max Flare is going into that Incineroar switch in, that is going to be able to catch it very well. Uh, but you've still got the opportunity to just ignore the Amoongus completely because uh -huh. you're Grass-typing, get the Vine Lash uh, into the Groudon and do some massive damage as well. You've got to Dynamax the Groudon to be able to survive this attack. Yeah. Would a combination of a Water Spout and a Vine Lash be able to KO this Groudon? You could potentially just ignore this Amoongus completely. If you go uh -huh. for the Water Spout uh, on the Amoongus switch in as well, you're still catching an Incineroar that's still going to do massive damage. Yeah, so it feels like a bit of a slippery slope for Juan Odriozola, aka Juan Tu. And in this situation, they need to try to regain their balance as best as possible. But yes, they actually get the read there that you did make a comment on, uh, Jamie, that Max Flare was trying to get rid of the Amoongus, but was met with that Incineroar. And the water spout comes out not quite enough to pick up the KO naturally on that Incineroar. Look at the minimal damage it's dealt onto that potential AV assault vest. A Groudon as the Groudon, my lord, deals so much damage thanks to that Max Quake straight into the Kyogre. We know that Kyogre isn't one of the boltiest Pokemon when it comes to its physical defense there. And um, most importantly, being able to get those special defensive boosts from those Max Quakes is going to be so, so crucial right here because we do not see any sort of available um, damage mitigation um, from Juan Benitez's side in the form of maybe an Incineroar, just an Intimidate Pokemon. Yeah, so the Groudon is going to have to be the Pokemon that uh, powers through the rest of this game for Juan Odriozola. And 
it may not be able to do it. It's taken already a reasonable amount of chip damage. That's putting it closer and closer into Behemoth Blade range. Mm -hmm. And you've got to assume that the Zashin is waiting in the back uh, for uh, Juan Benitez. So the Incineroar is in one more range of the uh, G-Max Vine Lash uh, Ferocious Beating. That means it has to either stay on the field, get a fake out or something into the into the Kyogre, but sacrifice itself or switch itself out and not get that fake out. Allow this Kyogre and the Venusaur to just launch off its attacks once again uncontested. Yeah, as we're going to be seeing a, bit, uh, seeing a bit of that cat and mushroom sort of uh, switch synergy going on there. G-Max Vine Lash goes into the Groudon, and we also see the double targeted attack coming out from the Kyogre, not dealing that much damage at all. And wow, we see the Max Flare coming out. It's not quite enough, even in the sun. We see Groudon actually really missing its primal form, uh, which would have given that additional same type attack bonus boost. Yeah, and now the Venusaur has used up its standard of Dynamax. Uh, but that doesn't particularly matter. The Leaf Storm's going to be pretty much as strong as the G-Max Vine Lash would have been. You still get to ignore the Amoongus completely. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can just go for the Weather Ball once again. Weather Ball in the sun is still going to do massive damage to the opposing Amoongus. At least you've taken care of the opportunity for the Kyoka to go for Water Spouts. You need to rely on the shaky accuracy of Origin Pulse now. Or you could just go for Ice Beam into the Amoongus, and that would do super effective damage as well. Uh, the Groudon should be able to survive another round of attacks because of all the Quake boost that it got on the previous turn. Yep. And uh, But then it's, it's just so low at this point. Uh, indeed, he's going to be coming in. Uh, that's would be able to do some extra damage as well and get some redirection going. Mm -hmm. and you've got to assume the Zashin is waiting in the back as well that will be able to come in at any point and pretty much just finish off the game with the Behemoth Blades. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just that uh, Juan Otriofola at some point it has lost a lot of their available resources and that is going to really pay um, the price as that Zashin, like you made mention of, is logically going to be waking in the back but no we see the weather ball coming out being boosted and uh, converting into that fire typing of course due to the weather available on the field max quake goes straight into the venusaur slot it will be picking up that ko and going ahead and further boosting it's as well as amundus's special defense uh, stages now up to plus two but like you said jamie I think this is very, very cautious. It, although, actually, apologies, I forgot the Amoodus was still waiting to take its turn. It's put the female Ndidi uh, to sleep at this point, so the female Ndidi won't actually be able to get any sort of redirection going, at least with the subsequent turn coming up. It won't, but it's effectively already done its job. It's set the psychic terrain. That means when the Incineral comes back on the field, there's no potentials for the fake outs. Yeah. If Kyogre collects Origin Pulse and connects three times, that is three KOs at this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Groudon is in range. The Amoongus would still be in range and would have to regenerate itself and switch back out again to be able to survive that attack. But then that would be Incineroar switching in on the potential Origin Pulse. So yep. it was very smart switching out the Kyogre on the previous turn to allow yourself to get back into that range. Because the Origin Pulses were really not doing too much damage to the Sun. And they will definitely do enough damage in this range. So uh, do you maybe opt to go for the Origin Pulse? Do you go for the safe Ice Beam and guarantee that you hit at least one target but allow the other Pokemon to be able to move? Or do you take that risk with the Origin Pulse with the shaky accuracy? Because if you do connect with Origin yep. Pulse, you're going to win this game. You really will. So I think that may be the play. At least personally, I'd have to go for because I feel like that can win the game then and there. But let's find out what Juan Benitez has decided to opt for as Juan Odriozola actually switched out that Groudon for the Incineral. Amundis is going to go for that Protect right now. And Didi naturally taking its first mandatory sleep turn. Origin Pulse comes out. It connects into the Amundis' Protect. But it is successful in landing with that Incineral. So I do relatively like um, Juan Odriozola's uh, play here because they're going to be able to actually go ahead, bring the Groudon once again back in. And I think their strategy has to be to hope for Origin Pulse miss here. Do you even need to go for Origin Pulse at this point? You sure. can just go for Ice Beams. And even if you don't only pick up the KO on one Pokemon, there's there's going to be a third Pokemon waiting in the back. You've got to assume it's the Zashin. Yeah. So uh, you can just Ice Beam KO one of these Pokemon and even if both get KO'd, you'll be able to Behemoth play KO the other one. And that's even if Indeedy uh, just doesn't get the KO as well uh, with, oh. the, with the Expanding Force. But uh, no regard for the Shaky Axe here, Roger Pulse. Let's just connect both these moves oh. and KO the Groudon. Not quite the Amoongus, uh, but that can be dealt with at any point. We'll have to see if the Indeedy is going to finish it off by waking up. Uh, if it's not, we're going to have to take an extra turn here. But yeah, that is going to be curtains for that Amoongus. And Juan Benitez, uh, sneaking in at that 6-2 rating, is able to advance over our 8-0 in Juan Odriozola. Exactly. And I think the way that the manner that they've been able to do it is very, very impressive. Who would have thought that Kyoda Venusaur is such an amazing lead into a Sun team? Yeah, you get to go for the Sleep Powder. If the Sleep Powder connects, like we saw into the Lunala, that just took away any momentum and any opportunity to go for Trick Room. Uh, if you wanted to allow the Lunala to have a chance of setting the Trick Room, uh -huh. you need to switch into your Groudon. Yeah. To a full HP Water Spell, which exactly. you never want to do. <laughs>
you, you can't, maybe have to at some point. You always want to win the weather war and overwrite the rain uh, if you need to, but it, you never want to have to do it by switching in on a full HP water spout, no. and that would have had to have been the option, and that would have still been losing so many resources having yes. to do that. And that would have been even if the Lunala woke up. And if it didn't wake up and you just lose most of your HP on your Groudon, that yeah. wouldn't have been worth it. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, just the sleep powder connecting on that first and just being able to free up your water spouts uh, was very critical in that game too. It really was. And I think uh, just being able to have so many options to go for in that sort of lead, in that sort of matchup at least, with how Juan Benito uh, monitored that game one as well and opted to go for that game two lead, uh, just goes to show... Uh, I don't know, I feel like matchup-wise, it's really good because it allows the trainer to actually properly evaluate the options based off of game one and say, okay, game one, um, I saw Juan Otoriotola, for example, actually opt to go maybe for a fake, or actually not even fake out. I brought female and Didi, so they may not want to risk to go for any sort of fake outs. They want immediate momentum under Trick Room. I'm going to exploit that, and that's essentially what we saw there. And that's gone ahead and granted Juan Benitez that lovely little top four uh, place going into hopefully the finals if they'll be able to do it later on for themselves but of course that is what we've seen right now what we are going to be doing ladies and gents we will be progressing onto the top four immediately after a short break we have been told that all top eight matches are now complete we have the deciding uh, victors that will be going ahead straight into the top four the graphic will appear shortly after but we'll sh see you shortly and we'll be right back in just a few moments Hello and welcome back to the top eight of the Pokemon 2022 Bilbao Special Event. I'm joined by the final winner of our last top eight match, uh, Juan Benitez. Congratulations for making it into the top four. How are you feeling after advancing this far? Thank you, Jamie. I feel really, really happy because this is my first ever uh, cut in a major tournament. And I really didn't expect. <laughs> I came with the idea of doing well, just doing well, but the team was very good and I think I, I, I have played good too. Yeah, I, I would very much agree. We saw some great play uh, in that uh, in that set, especially to make it through not one, not two, but three trick rooms that were set uh, in that game one. How, how did you manage to position yourself uh, through all of those trick rooms? Yes, I was uh, planning the, the game plan with my friend Danny and I called him and they told me, yes, uh, he can put the trick room and then spore and spore and spore and spore. But uh, he thought I had safeguard and I don't... So, uh, when uh, he put three groom, I know with NDD I can go with uh, one water spout, uh, origin pulse, and with uh, William Vilas, how I am planned so I can be asleep, uh, I, can, I can win the, the game finally. Yeah, I was uh, made, able to make it through very well, but then in that game too, you just hit the sleep powder in Sonata and took care of Trick Room immediately because you just clicked two water spouts and, and won. How are you feeling after that sleep powder connected with the yes, Lunala? But it was, a, I think, a risky play, plan because uh, I I knew that he was going to read uh, an Indeedee switch in Kyogre or uh, Venusaur slot. So I thought uh, he's going to, to read. So I'm going to hit with both. Uh, and I, I read correctly, it seems. Yeah, it was a very, very strong play and um, paid off very well for you. So uh, we can see now uh, that in this game too, we got the stats of the percentage damage dealt. Uh, they, one, uh, Audrey Zola had to rely heavily on the Groudon, but at that point you would stop the Trick Room, so it wasn't able to do enough for you. And, and the Kyogre was just able to click Water Spout after Water Spout and do a massive amount of damage. So uh, huge congratulations for making it onto the top four. Uh, are there any uh, shout outs you want to give uh, before we move on? Thank you, Jamie. I will always say to the top four and hope I can do well. Sounds good. So we will be seeing you uh, very shortly in that top four. So congratulations once again for making it through. We will cut to a short break and we'll be 